Pedersen's at the front to talk to him. I'm done with Hughes. I got all my quotes. I sent them off to you. You're all good. Um, I walk over to Patterson and I'm like, this is the time. I'm going to speak Swedish to him. And I wanted to say, uh, very good. And I said, Petey, I'm going to try a little Swedish with you. And I said, very good. What I said was, um, Valdigval, which is very evening. I said to Patterson. And then he said, what? <laughs> I said, so I said it again. And he's like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I said, I said trying to say very good and he laughed and he's like you just said very evening <laughs> i was like damn and then he told me uh i think bro bra um valdi bro uh that's how you say very good so i screwed that up uh very evening yeah i said very evening uh but hey i'm working on it does it no okay, I, it's hey, not I'm all not, gonna come yeah. in one one day here i'm not trying to make fun of you for sure um the one thing I want to ask is like, yeah, does it give you a newfound level of respect for these guys that come learn English, which is a harder language to learn? Oh, English is stupid. Yeah, it's a much harder language to learn than Swedish. Does it give you like a new appreciation, especially for these Are guys? Are you freaking kidding me on the green screen with come your on. all green can? What did you think was going to happen? But does it give you a newfound appreciation for guys like Pod Coles and somebody's going to freaking meme that now? You got the big freaking never mind. <laughs> yeah, it does. No, I've Forget seen, it. Like, whatever. I've seen Niels Huglander uh, back when he was a, a he was a guest on this show. I think in 2019, he couldn't speak good English because the guys up north in Sweden they don't speak good English. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, Huglander, I've seen him grow. He's mm-hmm. grown into a, a great speaking English. He's got a, he's a good quote, and he had a great story. I mentioned it the other day. Okay. Paper. Tuesday night in Vancouver, yep. a big win for the Vancouver Canucks. Oh. A hat trick for Elias Pettersson. A benching for JT Miller. Mm. Where do you want to start, Bud? Do you want to start with Elias Pettersson because that's I think where we should start. You just spoke to him. You said very evening to him. Uh, very evening. It was one for him. Very. E- it was a very evening That's for Elias Pettersson. If I've ever seen a very evening, that was it. That yeah. was a very evening for and Elias Pettersson. I'll say this because I know some people asked him the reply. He was super nice about it. I think he appreciates it. Like Elias yeah. said, I think he. Appre- I think you know. I'm gonna get there at the end of the season. I'm gonna be doing some Swedish stuff with these guys. Okay, so he's now up to five goals on the season. Puts up three last night, including the empty netter to seal Hat the trick. deal or treat. Here's where I want to trans. Okay. You you go about the positives about Elias Patterson's game. Hey, good call. Um, <laughs> obviously, Patterson shooting the puck. Here's the thing: that Brock Besser screen on the power play goal that Elias Patterson scored. That was the best play. It wasn't the shot; it was the screen by Brock Besser on Elias Patterson's. Was it the first or second goal of the game? Um, anyways, and then the other positive, and I asked him about this at the end. I said, "What's going through your mind as you're looking at an empty net?" <laughs> because we saw what he did last <laughs> week against Nashville. <laughs> he had a good laugh about that as well. Uh, but uh, man, I. Yeah, Pedersen, you you get three goals, and it felt like it wasn't one of his best games in the end, right? And I think Rick Tockett even talked about that a little bit later on when when we got a chance to speak to him. But overall, this wasn't the the way the Canucks wanted to play. But because they were able to fall back on that backbone a little bit of just being able to stay at least enough in their structure. I don't think they played well in the structure, but they played it enough to keep them in this game. Thatcher Demko, he's done this a lot in in his Canucks career, but he kept them in that game. And let them kind of turn it on the third period there and take it home. So Rick Tockett, we didn't get to see his media career much in Vancouver because mm-hmm. he was obviously down south in the States. But I think he has learned a lot and he has also been he's just been very good with the media. He seems to understand um, what he should and shouldn't say. And he's very honest is the thing that I've noticed with Tockett most of all. And last night we saw some of that negative media Rick come through because he was asked. I think it was Batch that asked the question, whoever it was asked. Yo, what did you think of Elias Patterson's game tonight? Like the softest softball question ever. And that's no disrespect to the person that asked it. That's hat not what I'm trying night, to yeah. say. It was a hat trick night. Of course you set him up for that, right? And it goes, yeah, he gave the puck away a lot. Mm. Like he, he he highlighted the negatives of Elias Patterson's game. And I think that's just, that's not to say, oh, talk, it should be nicer. Right. This is to say that the bar is being raised. The bar is finally being raised. It's starting with management. It goes down to Rick talking and it's going down to the players. There is that accountability that we've heard so much about that we never is. saw before this. Oh, that's unacceptable. No, it wasn't. Now it's actually unacceptable. Now there's actual accountability on this team. Mm. And Hey, when you're six, two and one, you love to see that level of accountability. And the thing I like about talk it, I don't want to just come on here and say how much we love talking every episode because that's what it feels like we've well, done. Because why it's too busy doing that over. Well, why did a good job? But what I really want to say is just that I think what talk it does so well is he really understands when to pull back. Like he knows when to push, 
and he knows when to pull back. And I think he has a very good handle on that because look like John Tortorella teams, for example, they always start super hot. He keeps it at 110 all season long. Talk it's doing a better job. I think of setting a standard backing off when things are going well. And then when he needs to, he steps back in. And I think we've seen that through his time with the Canucks, but especially this season, of course, and the fact that JT Miller was the guy on the bench last night, look, everybody was asking about it. I swear, Talkett almost said it could have been PD because oh. he he said, he said it could have been anybody. Like he's like, there was a few guys that weren't going and he said it could have been. And then he paused and didn't say who he just didn't name a name, which is fine. But JT Miller was the guy that wore it. Obviously he takes the hooking penalty followed by the unsportsmanlike conduct to give the did predators a four the, minute power on play the broadcaster. Did you see what the unsportsmanlike was it from talking to the refs? Was yeah. it something extra? I thought no. it was something extra after looks like talking to the refs. Talking to the refs okay, I couldn't see it from up top to be yeah. honest. But it was an it. awful call, but Hey, oh, there was that awful. call on Forsberg was off. That, that, was, that was, was the softest worst call I've ever seen. In any any hockey game ever. Goes for like a... They gave him a slashing call for like hitting the blade of the <laughs> yeah. stick too hard almost. Like that was uh, oh, that man. was a rough one for sure. There was a lot of laughs up in the press box on that one. Okay, let's um, pull up the NHL point totals here. Yeah, we got um, uh, the uh, the top of the league for the point totals. Um, who's that at the top there? Jack Hughes, good kid. Uh, but Elias Patterson, number two, 16 points. And the thing I want to highlight here, Chris. Go ahead. Elias Patterson's not at practice today. Okay. He's matter. been playing through something minor is what talk it said. He's banged up, didn't need to practice today. He's playing through something, putting up the second most points in the league. Quick, in your first contract negotiation with Lewis Patterson, what are you offering him? I'm, not I'm just kidding. Don't answer that question. Don't He's up to that. five goals and 11 assists on the season. He's off to a hell of a start. Second yeah. in the NHL for, for points right now. Uh, but, uh, but in all seriousness, like his next contract is going to be very, and I can talk about this if you want. Sure. It's going to be very expensive. Like the people that were like, Oh, let's see if he's actually worth 10, 11 million. Yeah, good luck getting him to sign for that. If he's at top 10 in scoring, like if he breaks the 100 point mark again, you're looking any any scoring goals too. You're looking at a guy who's going to be making at, at the very least 12. And if you're going long term, probably like 13. I don't want to say 14, but I think 13 is very, very realistic for what you're going to see Elias Patterson sign for. He's one of the best players in the league. Yeah. Elias Patterson. He's playing like it right now. And uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, that's the other thing. Like he's playing through something. We're not. I don't think we've seen the best of Elias Pettersson this season. I think we're going to see stretches so where he's crazy. better than he's been in these past nine games. Like that's the that's the real exciting thing for Canucks fans. And let's get to the uh, defense scoring here in the NHL. Who's sitting at the very top? Quinn Hughes, number one. Yeah. He's got eleven points quietly. Throws up three points last night. Yeah, easy money. Doesn't get a goal. Thank you, Sam Lafferty, for that. To uh, keep that bet going over here. And also, Luke Hughes, he's leading defenseman scoring among rookies. Well, Luke Hughes looks good. We could very realistically, and I know you don't get to vote anymore. I mean, you never did, but I never got a chance um, to vote. They didn't trust me with any of that. We could very realistically see Jack Hughes win yep. the Hart, Quinn Hughes win the Norris. Correct. And Luke Hughes win the Calder. Like we could see a trio of Hughes brothers go home with hardware. And How hey, cool would that be? Quinn Hughes, pick up the heart too. Maybe the Art Ross. I'm just joking. Put him between the pipes for a couple and get him in the conversation. Yeah, get him in the Vezna. <laughs> yeah. Why not? But I mean, that's the interesting thing is looking at these guys. And like hey, that. Rick Tockett. Rick Tockett for the Jack Adams. If they make the playoffs, he's for sure a nom uh, nominee. You know what the difference is right now? This Canucks team winning games. One of the big differences, obviously. But to me, it's like their stars are still leading them, right? But they've got that backbone of structure. They've got the parts behind them helping out. How good is Ian Cole looking the last little bit here? Not like he's not doing a lot, right? He's not he's not uh, creating a ton of offense, but he's playing his role to perfection. Like he, there's a reason why Ian Cole's on all these playoff teams, man. Like he's playing well in the spot he's at. I like him in the pairing of uh, of Friedman. They're great. I think they've been awesome together. They and have I think been. Cole most recently here. He's been excellent, fitting into a couple different spots in the lineup. I like it. I like Ian Cole right now. I think it was Wags that wrote it, but he wrote about how the Philip Ronick and Quinn Hughes pairing, yep. their shelf life is basically dictated on how well Mark Friedman can play and how long he can keep it up oh, yeah. with what he's doing, right? Uh, and he, Friedman, he's out there uh, yesterday. He's in his shorts on the ice, uh, just on his... That's left. right, in his, little, in his runners. Flicking the puck. He was doing a little uh, fun little drill with one of the Sedins out there, seeing who could saucer pass the puck closer to the... From end, from side to side, who could get closest to the wall there? That was cool. That's awesome. You know what else is awesome? Everything. 
the daily face-off survivor pool oh game. yeah it's it, live it's live today folks go. be sure to go check it out wendy's is offering fresh prizes all season long with wendy's daily face-off survivor fantasy the game lives weekly on dailyfaceoff.com with weekly prizes and a season-long prize of five thousand dollars up for grabs it's simple sign up play and then get free stuff on the wendy's app you pick a prop that will happen in the game i pick uh colorado three and a half uh three and a half or more goals. And it even shows you the percentage of people that pick the same oh, thing yeah. as you, which I find really interesting. You pick a prop each day, you do it all week and you just, you try to survive and it tells you how many people are left in the game. It tells you how many people are entered. It's so cool. Go check it out over at daily face off. And while you're playing that game, use the DoorDash app to order Ding yourself dong. a barbecue bacon cheeseburger, we freshly added week, yeah. To the Wendy's lineup, enjoy the Applewood smoked bacon and crispy onions as cheese melts over the fresh, never frozen Canadian beef. It's Next the, week, it's the onions, man. Those crispy onions. It, come on. Next week, we'll go over our results. Well, I'll go over my results. I won't. Also, we're announcing the new co host in like 15 ish minutes. Um, and with that, let's bring in. Well, no, it's not Frank. No, it's not Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Sorry right. to the new co host who's yeah. going to be joining us and he's going to do an excellent job. I wish. Um, Frank Saravalli. The grandmaster of Daily Face Off, yeah. Frank Saravalli. Uh Frank, what was your pick today in Daily Face Off Survivor Fantasy? Uh, Sabers win. I like that. Okay. I thought about that, but what do you? Th- I don't know. You, so you're one against Philly, hey? Yeah, I mean, they're bound to regress at some point. But do you Sabres think that happens hungry. tonight? We were just having this conversation that John Tortorella teams always start the year so hot. I don't know. Two straight losses for the boys. They're coming back. I, I don't know, man. I, I thought long and hard about picking Philly tonight. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I think that's the best part is I like going against the green a little bit. Yeah. No, that, we'll see. I got a bet way better the day later on today about Buffalo. <laughs> only, I'm Frank. Only 13% of the pool has picked the Sabres to win. Get a cheeseburger out of it too if you vote, right? That's all you get. <laughs> Dude, I, I had one of those barbecue bacon cheeseburgers uh, when I was in Edmonton over the weekend. They're so good. Pretty, pretty good. I know. Frank had a cheeseburger. Breaking news. (laughs) Way to go, guys. Yeah, that's what we do here on the show. Well, you know, there's been too much cheeseburger talk on the show in the last little bit, to be honest. Frank, uh, Canucks are are six, two, and one on the season. On the back of structure, as well as their stars, which one do you think has impressed you more this year? The way the Canucks are playing or the way that their stars are playing right now? Definitely the way their structure has really come to the forefront. Uh, It's no secret or surprise that the Canucks had quality star players really kind of at every position. Um, You know, you've got Pedersen, you've got uh, Hughes, you've got Demko, like you've got all the positional boxes checked, but the common thread between those players being here and the last number of years has been next to no structure. And look, I don't want to pat myself on the back. I mean, I can't because my arm's not long enough. But I feel like as an early adopter of this Canucks team being a playoff team this year and the different almost like, I look, I know we're only 10% of the way in, but almost everything I told you guys being in van in training camp has come true. I know. I, was, I told Quads, was, we should have just played your interview from last time right now. You would It would have been timely. It would have gone well for you. Um, the other guy, and something that you actually talked to, you talked with Ian Cole, we're loving the way that he's fitting in. It's like you don't, he's a player that, yeah, we'll come here and we'll do the show. We might not even talk about him all week, but like, is that not the guy that Ian Cole is in your lineup? A guy that probably not going to get talked about a lot. That means he's doing a hell of a job. Set it and forget it. He's like one of those easy bake ovens. Like you just kind of put him in the lineup and watch him go. And the best, some of the best defensemen, like if they're not impacting you at the offensive end of the ice, the best thing you can do for a defenseman is not notice them or talk about them because that means they're not contributing to a hellscape in your own end. And that's sort of what Cole is a no maintenance, low maintenance player that has been around and gets it and also feels like what that was one of the real revealing things of my interview with the Canucks guys during, you know, training camp was him saying he feels like he has a lot left to give. A lot of people look at the last, you know, few years of being on one year deals thinking like, okay, this guy's sort of getting toward the end of his career. And he goes, 
yeah, I, I mean, I haven't played that many games in the NHL. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. And he almost like looked at me in the interview and was like, wait, you, you don't seem to believe this. And I was like, no, I just, it's an interesting thought for a guy that didn't make it into the league until later in his career that he would end up being a mainstay for so deep into it. Quinn Hughes has been ultra impressive to start the new season. Can we see all Hughes brothers walk away with hardware at the end of this year? Well, I said already. Um, of course you did. <laughs> no, that he, I, he's like, he's going to squarely factor into Nara's trophy voting. Um, I'm actually pulling up my ballot from last year because I'm really curious to see where exactly I had him. I'm pretty sure that I had him right in the mix for the Norris and I'm just scroll. Oh, did you have him at? Where'd you have him? I, I either had him three or four. Second or third. Yeah, I think online. you were on third as well. And I, I think, had yeah. Carlson, I had Hampus Lindholm was in my top three. Yeah, I think you had them three. I looked this up the other day. I had him at three? I think so, yeah. Really? I thought I had him at second. No, I think you had you were big on uh on Hampus. Lindholm was good, yeah. But uh, I, I really I lied. Him. I did not have Quinn Hughes on my Norris ballot last oh. year. Oh my goodness. Here we go. I went uh Hampus Lindholm <laughs> today. Which, by the way, did not vote Eric Carlson one. I went Lindholm, Miro Haskinen, Kale McCarr, Eric Carlson, and Adam Fox. I know I mean, he was in my <laughs> he was in my like sort of short list of names that I had considered, but apparently I crossed them off at some point. So Okay, so you have to do a ballot right now. Who's at top of your ballot? <laughs> oh man. Um I would say there's probably a pretty good chance that he's leading it. Yeah. Adam Fox also up there. Yeah. I mean, I, I like Fox. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to not like almost everything that Kale McCarr does and being north of a point per game, I think will keep him in that mix. Um, Charlie McAvoy sans suspension, probably. And by the way, like, we can talk all we want about Quinn Hughes and how good he's been because he's been excellent, but how much are you guys loving Philip Ronick? Yeah. So much stability brought to that pairing. Like, Frank, we, we've talked about this. We've watched AHLers, like guys who are bona fide AHLers. We've seen Luke Shen. We've seen a guy who couldn't crack Carolina's defense core at all as Quinn Hughes' main partners the past, like, Ever since he's been with the Canucks and hasn't been with Chris Tanev, which was just his first year. We were coming into the season thinking that it was going to be Cole McWard. Yeah, Cole right. McWard or Noah the Juleson. Guy yeah, and, the and fact then you remember when Hughes came out and said, I haven't played with a guy this good? Yeah. And then you remember when Rick Tockett said, we're going to do defense by committee this year? And yep. it was like, ooh, that's scary. Speaking of Halloween, um, <laughs> that, that would have been tough, but I like the consistency factor – and also just, I I think Hironic is a really valuable top four defenseman that all of a sudden, you know, for a lot of people that were second, second guessing and questioning Patrick Alvin and moving that pick from the Islanders and the Horvat trade so quickly, you don't often see top four D men come around and become available, let alone at an age scheme that fits with what you have going on. Yeah, I think that move, we look at it back now, obviously the success you're seeing this season, you like it a lot more than uh, than a lot of Canucks fans did at the time. So it felt like this team was going to rebuild, quickly goes into a retool with Philip Peronic, and he's added a ton. Like this, Quads, you said it on Oilers Nation when you were over uh, at the Oily Boys uh, office over there. Like this could, this is the first time where Quinn Hughes can be talked about, I think, in the realm of being one of the best pairings in the NHL. I think that's what you get with Philip Peronic being his partner. And we've heard talk it talk a little bit about like, is this going to be something because of the schedule that they're able to do with these extra days off? The Canucks have had a, a good amount of days off to start the season when they start going into back to backs and, you know, playing three and four nights. I'm curious to see what happens with the pairing at that point. But for now you're watching what this pairing is doing and they're excellent. And I think something that's helped that pairing even look better is the great goaltending they're getting from Thatcher Demko, who's playing right now at a 935 save percentage. Hardware. Goals against. Frank, you called it at the start of the season. We got to dig up some clips here because, uh, oh, yeah. I, dude, deep. I'm keeping the receipts. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> Canucks fans appreciate it. Are you the only one who's on that camp? You think he's starting to pick up some buzz around the league? How could he not? I mean, look at his numbers. They're far superior to almost everyone, with the exception of Logan Thompson, 
who has only played four games, like, I mean, it's kind of hard to discount the impact that Demko has had on this group. I, I was saying fully healthy, his numbers every single time when he, his body's right are like second to like maybe just a couple Vezina winners in the last handful of years. What do you make of everything going on in Ottawa right now? I know it kind of happened all this morning, but we've seen some fiery quotes from their new owner. Like, what's the situation here in Ottawa? It was, that was one of the most riveting and fascinating and refreshing press conferences I've ever seen. New Sens owner, Michael Ann Lauer, just spitting fire in terms of how this entire thing has played out. I loved how transparent and forthright he was. And so we'll start with the Pierre Dorian dismissal. Was it a resignation? Was it a, a firing? I mean, once Michael Ann Lauer learned of the NHL's decision to force the Sens to forfeit a first round pick in 2024, five or six, um, he said that he met with Pierre Dorian last night and told him that the penalty for this could be quote, no less than his job. And at that point, Pierre Dorian agreed and they agreed to part ways. Um, that part was interesting. He said we were basically grossly negligent in terms of how that situation unfolded and the whole thing could have been avoided. But I think what most people will latch on to from the press conference as Steve Steos takes over as assistant or as interim GM, excuse me, is the honesty that he showed when talking about the NHL and the the uh, process to purchase the team in that this Shane Pinto investigation goes back to the summer. Um, and he was not informed until after he had taken ownership of the team. And same thing with this investigation that was 19 months and 591 total days long since the 2022 trade deadline. He was informed of neither one of those investigations prior to purchasing the team. And in fact, said um, in quote that he thought maybe that they didn't disclose it so as to not uh, disrupt uh, the sale and and they could get as high a purchase price as possible for the seller, which would be the Melnick estate. So it, it was fascinating to hear all that come out from a new owner to the league. I'm sure he will be uh, dealt with accordingly to make sure that he goes back to uh, keeping his mouth shut, at least I think, because that's how the NHL does business. You sort of whip everyone into line. But to see that kind of fire, he it was pretty clear that he thought this was a significant price to pay. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I was briefly reading it before we went live here, but didn't he inquire about both of those investigations and he was told it was fine? Like he was told there was nothing going on? No. So I think what happened was uh, he was told when he asked after the fact that... Um, the seller, which would be the Melnick estate, did not disclose it to him because they thought it was a non-issue. Gotcha. And he said, oh, okay, I don't know gotcha. about you guys, but I'm pretty sure losing a first round pick is an issue. Evidently. Yeah. 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 Unless you get Philip Peroni. Yeah, unless you get Philip Peroni. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, uh, I think we'll wrap it up on that note. Thank you very much for joining us here. And uh, you can have a burger today. We approve. Yeah. I uh, already had one. Uh, and Chris just wanted to say on my way out, um, I don't know if this is the last appearance I'm doing with you on Canucks conversation, but, uh, congratulations on your new role with the Canucks, uh, really proud. You should be really proud of everything that you've built here, not just at Canucks conversation, but also Canucks army and, uh, can't wait to watch you go. Yeah. Appreciate that. Get started on Monday. So yeah, this will be our last one. Frank, it's always, always a pleasure to have you on. I know quads is going to keep it going with you down the road as well. And the new co-host is getting announced in, in 10 minutes, I think here. I'm like, stuck with I this think. guy and so, sources say, I know who it is, but I'm not going to spoil this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't Frank. Of course you do, know, Frank. <laughs> See you guys. All right. Oh, thanks man. Frank. There he is. Frank Cervalli of Daily Face Off. Check out the survivor pool, right? Uh, you call it pool. What do you call yeah, it? Yeah. Survivor Wendy's series. Wendy's survivor uh, pool. The survivor series, brother. Yeah. Sunday, 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 Wendy's, Wendy's, Wendy's. Hey, Speaking I just bought my tickets. Stuff. I just bought my tickets for the Lions game. Here we go. Yeah. Go get a claw, bring the noise, fill the dome, home playoff game, Saturday, November 4th. I got to get me a, a Lions jersey. Did you see the Lions at the Canucks game the other night? I did, yeah. They go up to the booth, and they were it was, the camera was cutting from guy to guy who could finish the beer the fastest. <laughs> I mean, they're, uh, football's a little different sport. Plus, they had like a two-week off, so let them have their beers. 
Uh, but Saturday, November 4th, 3.30. Tickets are on sale now at bclions.com. And check this out, quads. Peep it, as you say, you and your ki- you and the kids. Uh, they start at just 30 bucks. And speaking of the kids, 17 bucks they can get in uh, if you're under the age of uh, – or no, if you're under 17, you get in for 15. That's the deal. And I got my claw. I got my chain over there, too. I like the chain. But uh, I like the claw because I'm doing first downs the whole time. I put the claw in here and you put a beer in the other hand. and First down. First down. I got my tickets. I'm very excited. Did you? Good. I'm very excited. uh, Bring the noise and fill the dome. Yeah. Or fill the dome and bring the noise. I like that. That sounds pretty good. Or I think you just said it backwards there. Yeah. Um, I just want to check if something works. The good vibes here. This will work. Coming up, uh, I don't know if it works. It's not. Uh, it won't play on here if I play it. No, not well. It will, but not right now because you know he's not in here. Anymore. Well, I just want to check if it works. It works. Yeah, it'll work. It works. That's yeah, the button. Work. You're sure. Yeah, you just gotta turn it up. This bro. okay? Why don't you talk about four wins for a quick second here before we dive Ooh, into the, the right. good vibes here on the show? Because four wins. Did anybody win last night on the uh, the light and the lamp? I don't know. I didn't look. Who's running this place over T-Mart. here? T-Mart. That's T-Mart's job. Trevor Martins. Okay. He's uh, going to f- contact the winners if there were any. Okay. Uh, we got to talk about Four Winds. Yeah, the good folks at uh, Four Winds there. Four Winds Brewing. Family owned and operated in Delta. Home of the Four Winds Light Lager. A crisp, clean, and easy drinking beer. A beer for everyone. A perfect beer for before, after, or during the game. Ask for Four Winds Light. Light Lager at your local liquor store or have some delivered right to your door through the online shop at fourwindsbrewing.ca. Okay, uh, that's Prospect Roundup. That's Four Winds. Do you have anything? Any prospect news? Um, OHL Player of the Month, Hunter Brustevich. Uh, and uh, another couple points for Arshdeep Baines, who is now leading the, o- the AHL. And that's that's all fine and dandy. It's nice to be at the top. You know what's even better than that? Coming on the Canucks conversation, our sheet is going to join us uh, tomorrow. It's also Diwali weekend uh, out there at the Abbotsford Center, and that's a big, obviously, Arsh is going to talk about that. I know it means a lot to him. It's his favorite event uh, as they got a little promo video they play in arena there. It's Arsh's favorite theme night out there. So he's going to join us tomorrow, but he's leading the AHL, 22 years old. Okay. Good stuff. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's time to introduce the new co-host of Canucks Conversation. Five days a week, moving forward, I will be joined by... Chris, give me a drum roll. Here comes the money. Muted it quick so we didn't get... get bring him in, bring him in. Uh, Harmon <laughs> Dial is my new co-host uh, on Canucks Conversation. Harmon, my new co-host. How you doing, buddy? Well, I'm doing amazing now that you guys gave me that old uh, Here Comes the Money intro. That uh, that was nostalgia. And I mean, look, I'm I'm so excited for this. First of all, I mean... I know I've said this to Chris uh, when I saw him at the rink, but just wanted to congratulate it, congratulate him on such an awesome opportunity with the Canucks. I mean, it's been so cool seeing how quickly you've grown and with your talent, your work ethic, your dedication, I know you're absolutely going to kill it. And it was you know, so interesting thinking about both the pod and, and your journey. I can still vividly remember a time, I want to say in 2018, where I think my first interaction sort of with Chris's content in Canucks Convo was on a flight to Mexico on a family vacation back in 2018 and hearing an episode that you had with uh, with Botch and right away it was killer and I was thinking man this I think this guy's gonna go places and to see how rapidly you've grown since I'm I'm just so ecstatic to see that um and then yeah I mean I obviously want to thank uh quads you and the nation network for the opportunity and i'm just super jacked up i mean i've always had a blast doing this pod with you guys in the past um i mean i'll, I'll never forget sort of cool memories like the castle fun park promo video in, in uh in abbey yes. so i can't wait to get this rolling especially now that the team's off to a flyer of a start right meaningful games in november Harmon. you and i say it to each other every year we're getting our wish meaningful <laughs> games in november we're getting it Harmon. I'm super stoked to have you on. Chris was a part of this decision. People should also know. Um, I definitely consulted. Chris I was about... I was the one pushing against it. If anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Harmon, we're very excited to have you. We've got more announcements coming. Like Harmon, you know more than the listeners now, which is very funny because there's a lot changing because people have asked, are you guys still going to do the show in Chris's apartment? And no, the answer is no. And I'll say it. We've got a set. Like we've got a studio. And it's going to be looking like a much more official show than uh, 
Chris is off. Well, and on from the Friday, bedroom. Lisa said in the chat, I'm ripping this freaking green screen. I'm take. I'm going to burn it here in the apartment. Yeah, so we're in the studio coming, and we're very excited about Look it. Look at my drink today, Harm. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I can't even see it. Freaking green screen. <laughs> Fix the green can. The, cra- the can is all green. What did you expect? I don't know. Okay. Harmon, uh, yeah, we just wanted to introduce you to the listeners. Do you have anything to say to the Canucks fans and the listeners of our show? I mean, I'm just jacked up for this season, honestly. The way that they've started to have fresh, fun, new storylines to talk about. It's um, it's refreshing. And I mean, I feel so pumped up. I mean, there's already been nights where I've been up 2, 3 a.m. writing, crushing video. It just It just invigorates you. Uh, having meaningful games, seeing a team that seems like it's trending in the right direction, having star players that are performing at the peak of their potential. You obviously don't want to jinx anything. It's only, what, nine games into the season, but hoping this might be a bit of a special year. And and if it is, I mean, there'd be no better way to to start off a a new chapter of of the pod than uh, hopefully covering a a new chapter in this uh, Coors sort of um, history. I'm excited to see you guys do five days a week because you see how fast like chemistry grows on uh, mm. when you do when you're in here five days a week. I think you guys are gonna have some fun. And you young kids, you guys can say uh, what do you say? Peep this out and all the all the young slang that you that I'm. I'm oh, that's old. definitely not it. <laughs> I thought you were about to throw a Riz reference in there or say like <laughs> mid or peep no. this out. <laughs> peep this peep out. Dances well, are you kids yeah, doing these this. days? Peep this. That's what I I see on the TikTokers. Uh, the stuff that you're okay, always going okay. through. Okay, uh, Harmon, well, thanks not, for hopping let me on say today. Because yeah, yeah. Harmon was a huge part of the, I mean, you've been a huge part of the show. You were their Friday guest for a long time. You filled in all the time. Uh, but also that first episode was you and Jason Botchford on episode five. You guys were the two guests. That's the first time this show ever hit like triple digits for listeners, right? Like, and that was, at the time, that was a big deal. I was, you know, when the first four episodes, like, uh, you know, not to be mean to Josh Zamboni guy and Kurt Appleby, who are some early <laughs> guests on the show. We're only getting like 12 listeners. You and you and Botch had a huge part in giving the show uh, an elevated platform. So I, I'm so happy to hand it off to you. Um, and I'm, the only thing I'm rattled about, so this is episode 490. I so close to making it to 500 and I just couldn't quite make it to 500. Uh, but yeah, Harm, we're, I know everybody in the chat here just looking at the reaction. Everybody knows this is the right choice. And I hope you guys are going to have some fun with this. Uh, and yeah. Take it away five days a week. I know that uh, Nation Network. Oh, oh. man. Quads, do you have to take a cut or what? You got the, the money <laughs> manager on here. <laughs> we had to bring in the money. No, we backed up the brink strikes for Harmon. Speaking <laughs> of which, Amal Delich, our fearless leader on the show production side from sports that already got, got in the chat. So happy we are saying goodbye to the pilot headphones. We are done landing hey. planes. Our first, <laughs> I've told this story before. Our first meeting, Amal, what do you think of the show? Chris, you're not a pilot. <laughs> it, was the best. it was the best response. I, I got my it. hands back, though. I got my hands back. Yep. I like it. There's a joke in there, but I'll leave it. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Harmon, thanks for hopping on, man. Uh, we'll see you on Friday. You're going to do a hit with us on Friday, yeah. just the one last transition. And then Monday, man, you and I in studio together. Going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, I'll, boys. I'm so excited. Me, I'll give you a little piece of advice, Harmon. Go out right now, go to the PharmaSave and buy some headache medicine because you're going to need it showing up with quads five days a week. The, the ultra strength stuff. Thanks for the pro tip. <laughs> there he is, the new co-host of uh, Canucks Conversation. Okay, now he's gone. How do you really feel about the hire? I think it's great. No, no I mean, I like, I know, but I, in all honesty here, though, like it, I think a lot of people could have guessed this in the chat. We saw a lot of people guessing. And it's so uh, funny the because there was, there was a search that lasted – about 30 minutes. There was one other person who I asked and he couldn't do it. Yeah, no, because I got to go work for the Canucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it was like, there was one other person that I was like, okay, maybe, but I really wanted Harmon the whole time. No offense to the other guy. The other guy, yeah. Uh, he knows too. who he is. He knows who he is and he knows I, I respect him, but I really wanted Harmon, obviously. Um, yeah. That's a, a guy, a lot of people notice the chemistry that you and I have. That's a guy that I also feel like I have a level of chemistry with just from doing the shows. He's been our third host at times. He's done shows just with me. It's It was the easy choice, um, especially with the VanCast not, not being around any longer. Layup. The fact that Harmon gets to be back five days a week, live show. Like, we've got a studio coming, folks. We're so excited. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and it looks like we're going to be in there on Monday. Speaking of Amal, I literally just texted him. And, yeah, we, it looks like we have a plan to be in there on monday so hopefully Excellent. that works uh Let's get to uh works out anyone else 
yeah. as we wrap up here on the show. Of course. Uh, man, good vibes on the, on the show here. It is we good got, vibes. Uh, tomorrow, a little bit of a preview. Canucks playing against the San Jose Sharks. Gee, um, I hope they win that one. We'll say uh, Archer Seelaws. I really hope Warriors, they lose man. in San Jose. I got to be honest. So the, you have to come in on Friday, your last day, right before joining the Canucks, and you have to try to no, put no, lipstick no. on that loss. No, I got rink wide with Jeff after. They're <laughs> going to win that game. All right. It's time for anyone else presented by Here, DoorDash. No, hold on. Huge trap game, though, right? Four oh, games yeah. off in a row for the, for the Sharks. They're yep. bottom of the league. And the Canucks are playing a top five team in Dallas on Saturday. So huge trap potential there on Thursday. They, but they have, they have the horses to boat race this team. It's our listeners chance now to get involved and hit us up in the YouTube live chat. And it's also our listeners chance to get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. That's right. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter code NATION. 25 that's all capital letters nation 25 offer valid in canada subject to change terms do apply what do we got here in the chat what do we got because look everything is easy on doordash ordering is easy just yeah. open the doordash app choose what you want from where you want and your items will be left safely outside your door with their default contactless delivery setting all right i got anyone else for oh you got one let's hear, question, yeah. let's hear it what's your favorite uh video game of all time that you put the most hours into Skyrim. Skyrim? Never played. You never played Skyrim? I played. No, I oh. did play it. I never got into it. Oh, oh, that's even yeah. worse. I, I think. played it. I didn't like it. Oh, no, I don't like it. Oh, I why? Played, yeah. What did you not like about it? Yeah, just it's too slow. Moving around like that. No sprint or anything. Oh, dang. Are dong. you one of Sorry, these Lisa. guys that needs to see like the subway surfers video underneath like another video that you're watching no, to no, keep no. you mentally stimulated? No, I'm not like you. I don't po po freaking sit there on my iPhone while I'm eating food. I, I can do the slowest thing here. I played RuneScape. That was my game. I played probably the most hours I ever did. Was that's a RuneScape. slow game. Yeah, but that's because you're working at something there. RuneScape also ran on like Windows XP. Don't worry about any of that. That was a. Uh, it was good. I, I when I was in Grand Prairie, I played a little RuneScape at the when I was working. At the <laughs> I bet, I'll bet you did. Oh yeah. And nothing else to do. A lot of people say in World of Warcraft that'll be our anyone else question for yeah, today. Never, never. Your favorite video was, game of all I time. Just stuck there on. Uh, I mean, I refuse to say that the NHL franchise is my favorite game of all time, but yeah. I, I play all the NHLs. And hey, I was really good. NHL 17, I was really good. My ultimate right. team, I was really good. No, Vladimir I, Tarasenko yeah, on the cover. Are, are good. I mean, there's a lot of hours there. I told you about the FIFA board. I picked up FIFA in yeah. like 2014. Yeah. I do like FIFA, that's for sure. But I also, uh, when I was real young, uh, playing Gran Turismo 3. Mm. And it just, I'd be on the uh, three laps on the circle. I, I'd sit there for 12 hours. So I'd roll to that. Or Guitar Hero. Oh, Guitar Hero was fun. And Rock Band. I played Guitar Hero so much. Uh, the one year I got it for Christmas, I went to sleep and the and the the notes were coming down when I closed my eyes. All I could see was these colors coming down. I That's it, mildly concerned. I went out to my mom's place the other day. They had the Xbox out because they had a, a big uh, bonfire and they set up the Xbox and all this stuff. My old Xbox 360. Nice. What did I see in the corner? Guitar. Oh, still. What do I go in there? I play expert. Ninety nine percent on expert. You're, like, you're like messing I, with no, me. No, I'm not even kidding. Like I haven't. Like I haven't even skipped a beat. I was back on there. I I oh, I, I so don't believe you that I'm actually texting your wife about this. Do like it. I'm legitimately gonna text I, your wife. You can text her. Yeah. Ninety nine percent. I forget which song I I did. It was Guitar Hero World Tour. Easy money. Ninety nine percent. Then I set it up for the other folks. And on World Tour, uh, to tell you more truth about it, I didn't know. Uh, like. My mom's friend was trying to play, and he's like, I'll put it on beginner. All you have to do is strum on beginner. You don't even have to press the core. I thought beginner was like wow. the thing, but that's, I guess, easy. 99% I had on. Jeez, uh, if I pulled up the set list, I could probably figure out, remember what. Also, song the wedding speech, my wedding speech is now up on the Patreon. Patreon.com yeah. slash Connects Convo. Five and $10 tiers gets all the bonus content, but act now. Well, really, open it up to everybody. Open it up to everybody because we're closing the Patreon. Okay soon open it up to everybody in the like we have the two dollar tier or whatever it's open to anybody who's um good a patreon perfect it's not just so just any time. any subscriber of the patreon we're closing it this week i think uh we'll close it on uh, we'll close it in a week let people people can watch the video yeah, people can watch the video the wedding video it's i never check patreon, my wedding though. speech i thought i did pretty good i wonder how it came out on video yeah, lisa says love the wedding video favor happy tears were shed oh yeah, she already watched Watts it is, uh, that's very nice of my wedding there. speech brought lisa to tears that's yeah. very nice thank you lisa okay betway let's go get I us gotta, out of here I, what i do gotta do is i gotta put uh i gotta put nikki's mom's uh whole speech on youtube that thing was on you were there for that, that are was you really kidding good. me yeah, it was the best speech I've ever heard. And okay, let's go. let's go. Let's Here go. Let's go. You Bet gotta way. go. I gotta go. Betway. That's why I'm wearing this. I gotta put on uh, put a little little cologne up. 
You know, I, I've been wearing Hummer. Buddy, cologne. let's go. You're the one that's like Hummer hey, cologne. I've been using this since I was ten years. Don't old. you have to be down there at one forty-five? Yeah, yeah, I got to be there uh, pretty soon. Show uh, up, Betway bet of the day. But I mentioned it earlier, Buffalo Sabers to win over six point five total goals in the game, and my guy here, Tage Thompson, to have two or more points. Uh, Frank's riding with me. He thinks the Sabers are going to have a good game, so I got the Sabers to win over six point five total goals between the two teams. Tage Thompson with two or more points, ten dollar bet with a plus six hundred. I don't know what that is. Odds plus six hundred odds. That's going to return you seventy dollars on a ten dollar bet with the Sabers to win over six point five total goals and Tage Thompson. Pick up two or more points. Their Betway bet of the day. Betway, Betway, Betway. Betway, Betway, Betway. Betway. 90 plus play. If you choose to play, play responsibly. We'll wrap it up there for my co host, Chris Faber, and our technical producer, nobody. <laughs> who we're not announcing yet. Tomorrow he will be. Tomorrow announced. it's announced? Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of stuff coming tomorrow. Uh, Harmon Dial, of course. Our thanks again to Harmon Dial for joining the show. And uh, also, Aaron is in the chat, and Aaron said 99% on expert. Dude, I'm calling BS. I There's swear no to way. God. Yeah. I want to see a video of this with you holding the I paper from up, today's date. I picked oh up gosh. the controller and 99% of it. Whatever. Yeah. I, I, was, I, I, I was. I legitimately I don't the, believe you. When I missed the note, I was pissed. I, don't I thought I was going to write. I don't think you've ever lied to me. No. Ever? Dude, I Guitar Hero, the amount that I played of Guitar Hero 3, there was like almost all the songs aside from the last two sets on the playlist, I could play 100% every time what? on expert okay yeah when you were like 13 hey i still got it I'm i know I, I i genuinely don't believe that you still have it at 30 years i old. guarantee i guarantee you i swear to god i had you gotta go to your mom's. we gotta go back to your mom's yeah she's got two kittens out there now they just nice we'll go see the goats they, the goats still there okay they didn't make it through the winter <laughs> okay well they got coyotes out there. i know i know i know yeah you, yeah yeah i forgot the coyote fiasco you had once oh, and they don't yeah we won't bring that up We'll close it out there. Those things don't come around anymore. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> well, they did. They got the goats. <laughs> I gotta you, go. I gotta meet you. Here. moved out. For my calls, Chris Faber. My name is David Jolly. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Canucks Conversation. Canucks Conversation with Quads and Faber. New episodes every weekday, 1 30 across the board, except for Wednesdays, 1 o'clock. We'll see you there live on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. For more information, visit CanucksArmy.com. How about keep it to a thank you, Jim?